your God of hope, glory to you. May Christ your God, through the intercessions of your all pure and blameless Holy Mother, the holy glories and praise for the apostles, the holy glory, strength, and martyrs, the holy great martyr Demetrius the Murphlon, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim, and Anna, for our righteous and god mantle Father, Sava the Sanctified, our Father, our righteous Father, Carion, and his son, Zechariah of Egypt, the holy martyr Anastasios, the holy martyr Diogenes, the holy martyr Evrechios, the holy righteous Nonos, our righteous father Nectarius of Caris, the righteous Philotheos of Caris, the holy right martyrs of Caris, killed by the Latin crusaders, whose memory commemorate today and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is a good God who loves mankind. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. We had our, our book club earlier today and uh, this evening, and something we were talking about is tradition and how we understand the orthodox mindset, the thinking orthodox within the context of holy tradition. And we made a distinction. We have holy tradition, capital T, and then lowercase t tradition, and that's, I would describe it more as your local custom and practices within the Orthodox Church. So holy tradition includes our services, our, our theology, the hymnography, the iconography. These are holy traditions. And I would say like local tradition is the language we, we do it in. The, um, the icons, the particular icons that we have on, on our wall, which may be different from the icons you'll see at St. John's or Holy Trinity. We have local custom tradition and then holy tradition. And something that, that was pointed out was in the scripture, we hear St. Paul teach us about um, hold fast to the teachings you have heard or received by writing. But then there's other places where he says, beware of the traditions of men. And what we'll see in, in the Greek, para, paradisis, it's the same word for teaching that is handed down from, from the church fathers, from St. Paul, from uh, St. Nectarios, and then the traditions of man, which is warnings to his people, watch out for the traditions of man. But they use the same word, paradisis. And really how we come to understand it in modern terms, in modern times, depends upon the translation of the scripture we're reading. From, from King James, from uh, New International Version, whatever, there's so many different versions, so many different translations that we have in English, we start seeing this distinction from the traditions of the church, holy tradition, and then the traditions of man. And if we're in a more Western reading of the Bible, we would make that distinction between holy tradition as teachings that we should follow, and then the stuff we are to hide from is tradition of man. And so when people ask me, how do we, we gauge tradition in the church? Is it holy scripture-based or tradition-based? I would say yes, because holy scripture comes from holy tradition as informed by the church, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, we would have traditions of man, and these would be lowercase t tradition, or uh, one of the favorite terms is yayayology. Yaya means grandma in Greek. And so it's the teachings from yaya, who was educated in the school of uh, theology, but traditions that they learn over time when you watch my big fat Greek wedding and the bride comes down the aisle and everyone is spitting on her it comes from a tradition of the world where we have this idea of of um, the evil eye and if you compliment someone you spit on it so they don't get a big head so they don't get prideful they don't get egotistical but also when you compliment it Sometimes the evil one tries to come in and to corrupt it. So in the movie, all the people are spitting on the bride because they think she's so beautiful. It's a weird 
a weird way to look at things and see things in, through our Western eyes. Why would they spit on her? But from their small t local tradition, it's not, it's not theology, it's not dogma of the church, it's more of a superstition that they, they give you a compliment and then they spit on it so you don't get big headed. Other yayologies are, are just some of the, the simple things that yaya would insist on in the church. And there's usually, there's often no religious or theological standing to it. It was just the way she was raised and how she came to understand something in the church. So for instance, you shouldn't cross your legs in church is a yayology because um, there's this idea that it's, it's improper and, you know, to, to cross your legs, um, especially for women, right? Uh, there's this closing offness. But really, it's more of, you know, sitting down in the Orthodox Church isn't, isn't really the tradition. The usual posture would be we were standing, so we weren't really crossing our legs at all. But now that we have pews in, in, in the Orthodox Church in the Western countries, you know, we sit down and we should be ready for attention. If you cross your legs, you get very casual, you get very comfortable, and you're like two steps away from standing up, whereas your feet planted firmly on the ground, you can easily stand up. Why we throughout the service say, let us be attentive. Let us stand and be attentive like a soldier. And so we have these yayologies. But for the most part, holy tradition, as understood from the church, includes the hymnography, includes the, the readings, includes the teachings of our church fathers. And it's understood as being inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's not just one man with a, a, a lesson, a teaching, but maybe it does come from one person, but it was uh, authenticated and authorized by the collective church. So it's not just one person's idea, but it's the church that says, yes, what St. Basil said, it's 100%, we adopt this teaching as, as a formal God-inspired teaching of the church. And so we make that distinction, and, but we also understand that Holy Scripture comes from this same holy tradition, that it's the church that compiles all the books and recognizes which ones are godly inspired and which ones were, were heretical. So when we're talking about tradition, we'll make that distinction, holy tradition, capital T, and, and local tradition, lowercase t. Just something simple, something to think about. Um, please Thank you for joining us tonight. You may come forward to venerate the icons as we conclude with the final hymns. God bless you and thank you all for being here.